Oh, 
so good to us your God indeed our hearts are sorrowful there's deep sorrow there's deep burden in our hearts because of the departure of our dear brother yes well, it's been such a great challenge such an inspiration and we do appreciate his life how he has walked how he's lived how he's as upheld the standard Lord he lived the standard dear God and he died lifting up the standard yes and father we give you thanks thank you Lord you who know our hearts and in the sorrowfulness of our hearts at this time, we ask, Lord, that you would comfort your God, the bereaved, comfort the family, comfort the loved ones, comfort the relatives, your God. And Lord, console the hearts, your God. And Lord, the pain that we're undergoing right now, your God, help us through the pain. Help. Your God, you know, your God, why you do what you do. At times we do not understand. Lord, it's beyond our understanding, but by and by, we will come to understand so dear God, bless the family at this time. And Lord, Lord, you've seen all the tears that have been shed. Lord, from, from, from the time of the departure of our dear brother. Pray, dear God, that you bless the family. Keep them, dear God. Strengthen them, we pray. Help them, dear God, in the Christian pathway. Have the have your divine way. Remember, yeah. the, remember the relatives, dear God. Remember yeah, the, yeah. the the, the yeah. cousins and, and, yeah. and so many, dear God, so many lives that have been impacted. By Brother Nestle Jean Baptiste, pray that you would bless them, dear God. Help them through this time of sorrow. Father, we thank you. Thank In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. At this time, because we're going to follow the outline that the family has, we're going to have our scripture reading by the children. So, the order that you all are. Would you please come at this time? Hey, everybody. The following are some of Dad's favorite verses. Luke 20, verse 19. In your patience, possess ye your souls. Ecclesiastes 10. Verse 4. If the spirit of the ruler rise up against thee, leave not thy place, for yielding pacifies great offenses. Second Timothy. Verses 6 to 8. For I am now ready to be offered in the time of my departure. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me that uh, at that day, and not to me only, but unto all of them also. That love is a parent. Ephesians 6, 10 through 17. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord yes. and the power of his might. Put on the whole armor of God, and you may be able to stand against the wiles of the devil. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. 
Wherefore, take unto you the whole armor of God, that you may be able to withstand the evil day, and having done all, to stand. Stand therefore, having your loins girt about with truth, and having on the breastplate of righteousness, and your feet shod with the preparation of the gospel of peace. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith you shall be able to quench all the fires of the wicked, and take the helmet of salvation, and the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. Nestle Joseph John Baptiste was born on September 6, 1987, in Port Prince Haiti, to Fritz Joseph John Baptiste and Larissa Marie Deville John Baptiste. He migrated to the U.S. at the age of 13, he graduated from Erasmus High. He joined the U.S. Army in 1976 and was a paratrooper of the 82nd Airborne Division in Fort Bragg, North Carolina. He served there as a medical specialist. He attended St. John's University and was a Corps Cadet Commander of the U.S. Army. ROTC program. In 1981, God spoke to him and he repented and received salvation of the ministry of Pastor Milton P. Brown at the Church of God in Far Rockaway. He was later called to ministry in 1986. He married Jacqueline Marie Holness in 1994. He served as the administrator of the Church of God Christian Academy from September 1994 through 2013. In 1996, he started his mission work in Jamaica. West Indies, and in 2007, he began his mission work in Haiti. He became the pastor of the Church of God in 2008, where he pastored until his death. He leaves to mourn his beautiful wife, Jacqueline Jean Baptiste, his children, Jason, Charmaine, Nathaniel, and his wife, Stephanie, Casey, and her husband, Ben, Janelle, Asha, Priscilla, and her husband, Austin, Lemuel, Milton, Martina, and Benjamin. His grandchildren, Dujour, Xavier, Cheyenne, Isaiah, Jason Jr., and Chestnut. His siblings, Marie, Patrick, Sandra, Yannick, and her husband, Spur, Sheila, and her husband, Mark. Nieces, nephews, and cousins, and a host of other family members in Church of God, from the Church of God, family in Parkway, New York, and in Jamaica. Amen. Thank you very much. On behalf of the John Baptiste family, we would like to thank everyone for their love, prayers, condolences, encouraging phone calls, and thoughtful messages. We are comforted in knowing that all who helped by dad during the ministry are now helping us get through these trying times. We will forever be grateful, thank you, and we love you. Because of the limited time for the service, all cards will be acknowledged at a later date.
thank him in all things as he says to do so our deepest condolences to family friends and loved ones 
True leaders with deep sorrow that remourn the loss of our dear brother. Pastor Jean-Baptiste has been called home, to his long home. Indeed, he has been, he lived before us. We do appreciate, we appreciated his life. And as he has said so many times in his testimony, at the age of 22, that God has saved him. And when you think of 22, you think of the very prime of life. You think of an age of a time full of activity, sinful allurements, and exhilarating thrills. All those things he has set aside. He forsook, he turned away. But instead, he has succumbed to a life. He had surrendered his life to God. He, re he did not succumb to the life in the fast lane, that life of sin. Yeah. But he turned his life over at a very young age, 22, and I'm sure... He regretted that it was not sooner than that. He has chosen to serve God, and by serving God, he escaped the pitfalls. He escaped the traps of sin. He made the decision early. And I said he made the decision early. And because of the decision that he has made, we have seen his life flourish. When I came to the church, he was already there. I met him at the church when I got saved, and and he had been he had been a great encouragement, a great challenge. He he lived the life of a soldier in his Christian experience, lifting up the standard, and he died as a soldier, upholding the truth. If there's one thing that he did, surely. He upheld the truth. However, God has chosen to take him. And we have not the power to stop that. Right. There is no power. There is no power in us to stay in the hand of death. But God has given him 63 years on earth. He has 63 years. 63, am I correct? 62 years on earth to make a grand opportunity God had given him to fulfill his purpose. And I believe that he did just that. He has, he has left us behind, and now it is for us to carry the baton. It is for us to lift up the standard. It is for us to run and to hold on to eternal life. Yeah. The scripture I'd like to read to you at this time is found in Ecclesiastes chapter 3, verses 1 and 2. To everything there is a season and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A time to be born and a time to die. A time to plant and a time to pluck up that which is planted. Time. A finite duration. To everything there is a season, the Bible says, and a time to a finite duration. To everything there is a season, the Bible says, and a time to every purpose under the heaven. A season. To everything there is a season. It's a time to plant, a time to blossom, a time to harvest, a time to build, a time to break down. What do you think of the spiritual? To build a time to measure up. God gives us a span of time for us to make it right and to live the life that he commands us in his word. We are creatures of time. We are subject to time. You and I will be held accountable for what we have done with time. Yes, yes. We'll be held accountable for how we have spent our time and how we are spending our time now. It is very, very important. You're not going to be asked by God in the end how much money that you have a son of God. Did you live according to the purpose of God? These are important questions. We are here for a very short time. Yes. The brevity of life, the shortness of life. People spend their time doing so many things. Taking care of their own self-interest, their own purposes, and not God's purposes. The Bible tells us in Mark 1, verses 14 and 15, 
Time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. Romans 13, 11 says, And that knowing the time, that now is high time to awake out of sleep, for now is, it is not a salvation nearer than when we believed. The end of all things is at hand. We are living, and God has allowed us to continue to breathe. Yes, yes. He has lent unto us the breath of life. And knowing that now is high time, it is critical that we, that people surrender their lives over to God. Yes. Brethren, I tell you, when I consider the unprecedented time that we're in today and the pandemic, it is appalling to see that people are not running to God. Right. Yes. It is appalling to see that people are doing everything to try to, to, to keep their health in check. But then, what about the health of their souls. Mm. What about the health of the spiritual man? What about their relationship with God? The most important thing in life. Brother Nestle has left us. He has lived his life. But if, and if he were here, he would tell us to live the life of a Christian. He would tell us to uphold the standard. Yes. He would tell us to live the life that Jesus has commanded us to live. Live according to the mandates according to the statutes, according to the scriptures. Time is closing in. Every day, we are drawing nearer to the grave. That's right. Now the question is, when will your time be? Ah, yes. When will your time be that life will know you no more? When will your time be when life will cease? I want you to know that death does not mean the cessation of of the spirit, spiritual man. Right. It does not mean that. God's time clock is ticking. Mm -hmm. And is ticking surely according to prophecy. He is on target. Jesus is coming again. The Bible says his coming will be like a thief in the night. Mm -hmm. Unannounced. Yes. Hence yes. the reason why you and I must be prepared. We ought to be preparing to die. Yes, yes. How many this morning are preparing to die? They're preparing to get married. They're preparing to do some evil deeds. They're preparing for a great career. But I tell you, if you were to visit the hospitals today, oh yeah, oh yeah, they're full of people that are crying out. Right. Full of people trying to breathe. Gasping for air when they should be calling out to God for mercy. Say it, wow. say it. For mercy. It is very appalling to see people living their lives as if they will never die. Wow. Ecclesiastes 12 14 says, For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Every secret thing, the Bible says, yeah. God shall bring into judgment. Every word, every secret thing, every th anything that you've done behind closed doors, nobody knows anything about. God says it is time to get right, time to make amends, yeah. Yeah. time to get right yeah. with God. Yeah. This is not a game. We are living to die. Yeah. Yeah. But how? Serious is it to some people? It's not very serious at all. Not serious at all. There is a time and opportunity God has afforded us for man to be busy, but man is busy with his own self interest. Man is not taking it seriously. When it comes home, when it comes home, it's the time that people begin to think, it's the time the wheels begin to spin. And to begin to say, why now, Lord? Why me? Well, God is giving you a span of time to make it right with him. Now is the time. Today is the day of salvation. The Bible says, harden not your heart. The Bible says, Ecclesiastes 8, 5. Whoso keepeth the commandments shall feel no evil. Yes. 
And a wise man's heart discerneth both time and judgment. A wise man's heart discerneth both time and judgment. That was Ecclesiastes 8, verse 5. Verse 6 says, because to every purpose there is time and judgment. Therefore, the misery of man is great upon him. Man seeks to bring happiness to himself by the things he gives himself to. He seeks to bring pleasure to himself through material gains. Satan uses pleasure and sin to attract, to lure, to enslave, to entrap. Therefore, the misery of man is great upon him. The Bible says there is, in verse 6, because to every purpose there is a time and there is Time and judgment. Oh, yeah. Therefore, the misery of man is great upon him. For he knoweth not that which shall be. Mm-hmm. For who can tell him when it shall be? Mm-hmm. Indeed, we do not know. That's right. we, we, we are not able to foresee future events. God has kept us in a dark yes, when it yes. comes to future events. We don't know what will happen in the next hour, That's the next right. minute, the next day, That's the next right. month, or next year. We are in the dark. Yes, Hence the reason why we ought to be so prepared at any moment for God to call us home. I believe Brother Nestle made every preparation. I have dealt with him on a one-on-one basis. We have worked with one another. I have worked with him. Uh, we worked with one another, and I do appreciate his life. He 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 took the time to prepare that I can say because we have gotten closer over the years and we've come to know each other to know each other he took the time he didn't play around with salvation he realized that time was was of the essence there's something you just don't play around with he said get the job done that's right as a soldier get it done do it yeah it's not complaint just do the job do what god commands of us to do but we know not the day the bible also says in verse 8 for there is no man that hath power over the spirit to retain the spirit, neither hath he power in the day of death. And there is no discharge in that war, neither shall wickedness deliver, deliver those that are given to it. There is no man that hath power over the spirit to retain the spirit. We, as much as we love Brother Nestle, we could not stay in the hand of death. There's a time. It's God's time. It's God's choosing. God decided. Now it is our time to live. Right. It's our time to live. Right. Let us live the gospel. Yes. Let us do what God commands us to do. For time is ticking on. It's God, God's time is ticking. And it is important that we live according to God's purposes. May God bless you. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> what a powerful message. Put your hands together for Minister Emery. Yes, ma'am. He gave it to us. Yes, he did. Amen. In such a nice way. God was pleased. He was really. Amen. 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 Now, there's one thing that we we didn't do, and that was reflection. Would anyone care to come up and say, I. You're such a strong woman. I'm sorry. Yeah. And y'all come and gather with your mother. Thank you. As you come, I want to just ask a question. How many years were y'all married? How many? (laughs) Look back on the 25 years that we have spent together. I truly appreciate God for a wonderful husband that God gave to me. I, we enjoyed those years, and God has blessed us with 11 children, and we do appreciate that, and we have about 12 grandchildren. My husband was a very caring and loving person. He took care of me. I didn't have to ask for anything. Whatever my needs were, he always supplied them. He was always loving. He was kind. And I said, God knew exactly 
what I needed. And he gave me that person. I truly appreciate that for that wonderful person. I'm surely going to miss him. Last year, we celebrated our 25th anniversary and we had a wonderful time together. We went away and we spent a week together. And we truly appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And, you know, as, as the children are saying, they're going to miss their dad, but I'm going to miss my husband. And I remember the day when he died, I said, Lord, your will be done. And the scripture that the Lord gave me, he said, the Lord give it and the Lord take it away. And I truly appreciate God. I said, Lord, I'm trusting you. You are my father and you're not going to give me anything that I cannot handle. And I truly give you thanks that you saw it fit to give me this trial so that I can prove to you that I still love you. And I truly appreciate God for all that he has done. Um, I'm not a I'm not person to say much, but uh, over the last, I could say maybe three years, I've gotten a lot closer to, to my dad because as a result, he was joining the Army, kind of following his footsteps, and uh, I guess I, the one thing I do want to say is that I, I hope that in the, in the next couple of years, I could, or in my life, I could grow up to be the type of man that he was training me to be, where he's going to be. Uh, but I guess that's pretty much it. I thank you for being a Because if you have something on your heart, I don't want you to leave here and say, oh, I got a shut up. Uh, someone's family. I married into this family, and uh, my beautiful wife, she's my brother-in-law, told me about it before I didn't know. Um, told me he was a man like no man I, had, I would ever meet. <laughs> of course, I don't believe it. <laughs> beautiful brother, just like the rest of us. She turned out to be right. <laughs> brother Nestle, my brother Nestle. It was very different. He didn't have the same sorts of attributes. And I think he, he said it right. You know, when he found himself, when he saved himself, he wasn't exposed to much of what we exposed to when we go out to the real world. Yeah. Um, I look around the room and I see his bounty, his richness, his family, um, all of you just so beautiful people. You know, you're all different but you all have your own way of going. And I know uh, Nestle wanted everybody to be a certain way. And that's just not the way life is. <laughs> and that's okay. And, and I think as, as time moved on, he, he kind of understood that. He sort of understood that there were gonna be some of his children who went in different directions and some who went in the direction that he wanted. But I think more, more than anything else, he wanted each of you to have a firm moral grounding to do. He wanted each of you to be happy people, which you appear to be, and to carry on the tradition that he started, or actually that he got from his parents, which is to have a strong family together. And as I interact with you, I see that strength of family, the beauty, the love. You know, there's so many children, and all of you love each other. There's, you don't see that conflict. It's a very beautiful thing to see and to experience. And I think it's very appropriate that it's been 40 days since he passed. We'll see him when he And we bury him on Good Friday. And my wife has this way of calling him. And my wife is very different. Um, she, she always says, when she talk, talks about Nancy, Jesus walks. <laughs> and somehow or another he kind of fit that into his life the way it ended but I'm not saying I'm going to miss you bro I can still hear your voice and we're going to carry out your tradition thank you thank you very much Good morning, family. Good morning. Um, I just want to say, I got to 
had a big brother that, you know, he his mission, my mother always made him, was he was the highlight of everyone when he came. And he had to be in charge of every everyone that would be on us, among us. And I got to spend most of the time with him because I was the baby in the family. So he had to take me to school. He hated it, but he had to take me to school. He was going to high school, and all of a sudden, his little sister, 10-year-old little sister, is running behind him every day, and he's, like, running from me, trying to make sure I don't catch up with him. But he always, always took care of me. From from young, from the day he came to the United States until today, if he could, you know, he always felt that as the big brother, he was in charge. Even when when dad wasn't around, he just felt like he had to take, you know, the place of my dad. And I really appreciate it in the beginning, of course. He didn't want to respect that and be like, you're not my dad and you're not, you know, I shouldn't have listened to you. But as time goes on and I listen to the things, the conversations that we had in the past, I just really appreciate all the things that he have shared with me and exposed me to, or even communicated with me to Mark. You know, just being who he was as a pastor. He spoke about marriage, he spoke about relationships, and he always, always encouraged us to just follow the Lord and do the right thing oh, yeah. with, 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 in a marriage. And I just really, really wanted to say, you know, I was totally blessed to have him. And I was totally blessed to also be his sister, and I thank you all for, for just being here. Yeah. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Yes. As, oh, absolutely. Yes. When I heard that for the next day passed away, I said to myself, Nestle Roulette. <laughs> We had a, a number of talks in his office, and he, I remember the burden of the church upon, upon his heart, and we would talk about the church quite often, and usually at the end of our discussion or conversation, he would say to me, brother, we just need to continue to preach the gospel, whether people want to live it, or whether they don't want to live it, and whether the there is a decline in, in the numbers, or it says, do we just need to keep preaching the gospel? And I can I can never forget one day when I it was I believe it was hay fever season, and my my voice was was not the same, and was, I was a bit hoarse. And I went to him, and I said, Brother Nestle, my I'm pretty hoarse right now, and I'm I'm not sure about preaching tonight, Sunday night. And he looked at me. He said, brother, mm -hmm. you're preaching. I said, okay. <laughs> but we, we, we have known each other for, for, for decades. Over 30 years, I've met, I, we, I came to church in 1986. I had met him there. We, I used to spend time every Sunday in his home because I used to have to travel from Brooklyn to Far Rockaway, Queens. And I used to eat in his home every Sunday. A lot of the single brethren. Right, it's not home, and we used to nap there every Sunday, uh, fill up our bellies and take a nap and get ready for Sunday night service. And this is going on for approximately three, approximately three years. And and this is what God uh, wants us to do, to be hospitable. I can sincerely say he was a man of integrity, a man who cared for the family, a man who, who lived the life at home, who, who held the standard. Uh, indeed, he, I remember he used to uh, teach Sunday school the marriage the marriage class. Um, he taught us, he instructed us, he lived what he preached. And it is, this is one thing I do appreciate because we saw the example. The example was there. I, I'm, I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful for that. Uh, we have had two great men in our lives, and the Lord has decided to take them. Now, I believe that God is speaking to us. And as I was reading uh, regarding one of the six years' death. And, and one brother was so sorrowful about the death of, of one of the brethren that had died. And he didn't know what to do. And he felt that he felt that God has taken his dear brother 
because the people had not been so faithful in the work. And it was a rebuke. This is what, what God, what this gentleman, this brother, this is what came to his mind. He felt that God had told him. So God has taken him. We don't know why. That's right. That's right. But we thank God that we had an example in our midst. We, like I said, we've gotten closer. We have many laughs and, and, and many good times together. And and uh, we just had some real good moments. And and and, and but, but the great challenge was keep the standard. Live the life at home. Yeah. Yeah. For the home yeah. is the nucleus. Yeah. This is where it's yeah. at. If the right. home life is not right, yeah. Yeah. you got a problem with your salvation. Yeah. Yeah. And this is the message that we have heard that he has upheld. And I do thank God for him. May we continue to serve God as he has given us uh, such great examples. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. My dad was, um, he was always busy with the ministry in the church, but I never felt left out or he always made time for us. I remember when I decided I was supposed to to school, back to school, and he would wake up early and he would take me far and he would stay with me and he would work out all the paperwork with me. And <laughs> when I started school, I, um, I picked classes that were really early, so I had to leave the house for six. And sometimes he would wake up early to take me to school and he was always there for me. and. Yeah. During that time, we would like talk, and I really loved him because he understood me. It was really good. Thank you. You don't want to say I appreciate my father a lot. Um, first of all, I appreciate how he took me into his home and he treated me as one of his own. Many times I hear stories of how um, other young girls, they um, have like kind of so, so bad for them. And I told my father that if my real father was to ever come back, so my life I would feel so weird because he was like there for me all the time and he did so much for me he was um, whatever I went through he was always there for me and many times I told him how much I appreciated him for his training because I never had any problem with it I love the way how he trained me and everything that he did and even before he passed I was that that Sunday I was um, at the end of service, I was saying to myself, I cannot wait for my parents to come back home. And I was looking forward to picking him up on that Thursday. And when I heard the news that he passed, I was so shocked because, you know, I was waiting to tell him some things, like, I, you know, put aside um, some tutoring sessions that I was, was doing. And I said, you know, when I come back, I'm going to cater my time all to my father. I'm going to sit down with him, share um, some stories with him, even when he's in Jamaica him some encouraging stories he loved to try to encourage him and even while I was waiting for him to come back I never got that chance to do that but I said I'm so thankful that when I look back over all the many years someone asked me if I had some last words to say to him and I know because I had 26 plus years to tell him how much I love him and how much he was my number one dad in my life and I'm so thankful that you know every when he died, all I kept on hearing in my mind was that you have no regrets. You have no regrets. And I always told him that when, if he was to ever die, that I don't want to be just lamenting over his death. Like, I wish I had this opportunity. I wish I had done this. I wish I... So since he died, I just feel... I, I'm sad that he's gone because many nights after after church, I'm going to miss those times. I used to speak to him a lot, almost every night. And now that he's gone, I don't even... You know, it's, it's difficult trying to sit down. He's not there at the table, and I miss him tremendously. Hearing him preach, you know, and doing a lot for the saints in Jamaica and for in, in Haiti. Now we miss him very much. Thank you. Thank you.
Dad. A courageous man, he had mental and moral strength. A disciplinarian, he enforced obedience and orderly conduct from his children and others. A friend, he showed interest and helped everyone. A gentleman, always a hanky in his pocket. A great storyteller, not only did he change his voice to fit the character, he did the sound effects also. A husband, he showed me how a real man should behave. A joker, a lot of times only he understood his jokes. <laughs> a laugher, he would sometimes laugh tears. A man of prayer, nothing was too big for God to handle. All right, all right. A responsible man, he was always there for the church and his family. A firm man, he stood for what he believed. A soldier for the USA and for the Lord. A loving man. He corrected, but then he sued. My security blanket. I never wondered if the bills were being paid. A disciplined, a hospital man. He hosted people from South Africa to Haiti from Panama to the Bahamas, from California to New York. An entrepreneur, he organized, managed, and assumed the risk of many businesses. A musical man, he played the trumpet and the accordion, introduced his children to different genres of music, and encouraged them to play the instruments. A man of God, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. Amen. An inspired pastor. He preached. He <laughs> preached messages that hope fit the saints for heaven. My dad, you are a red man. Oh, that was beautiful. Thank you, Absolutely beautiful. <laughs> I just love this family. Um, my dad, uh, me and my pops, um, we beef on a lot of different things. Uh, there was a lot of things that I didn't agree on with him, and there were a lot of things we did agree on. The things we did agree on was uh, what's holding me now is brought me to be right here. The day I was talking, we probably were disagreeing with things, but it, it's it's just amazing how the way he lived his life and improved it by living showed me the importance of certain things, and not always about what you say, but how you act, how you move, how you respond to things. And he was things he taught me how to be tough, how to how to grit he had, really? the, the ability to you know stand true to what he believed in and see it all the way through, and not just say it. And no one else is watching and still be able to stay true to what he believed in. Um, it, 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 it meant so much to me. And now when, you know, that person on your ear, you realize how different points in your life he's been attached to you, even when you weren't attached. And I think, you know, for me, it's, it's, a, it's, it's amazing to see where we're at now. And I know when he was starting to get sick, um, I thought about going and visiting him and, my wife was kind of like, yeah, you should. And we spent about four or five hours together. And that was probably the most time I had to spend with my father, just one-on-one, -on -one, just me and him, and just really just chopping it up and just talking. And we had some really good, solid conversations. And you know, I think we grew together there. I grew. And you know, we may not have had the perfect father-son relationship, but I'm a firm believer that our relationship is going to be so much better now that he is where he is up in heaven. There's so much I've learned from him. There's so much that I'm going to continue to learn. And, you know, I just feel that this this was his time and it's time for us to move on. I think we all will be better. 
for this, and it's going to hurt. It's going to hurt us all. It hurts me a lot, but we will be better, and I just want to make sure he knows that I'm going to carry on his legacy, and we're going to do this thing the right way, and we're going to lead by example and not by words. So. I just want to say that my dad was a man of integrity, and I never felt he's always been a man. There's some men who are dirty men, old men, dirty old men. My dad has always been a man of integrity. And that is very important to me. Um, I said, he's not. I said, what? No. <laughs> yes, yeah, so that's very important to me. I don't want to feel like that. Um, there are very few men in my life that had integrity in that way, where you feel comfortable in their presence, like a father figure. My dad, he was very protective of his girls and a defender, defender of his girls, of his children. And I think his integrity is the top, top of security. Very stable. I think of people today just, you know, have unstable situations and very, very secure. I've lived in the same spot since I was born, um, same number since I was five. I think the dress is so beautiful to have stability and it's a little different now because since he's not there, even though we still have family, it's very hard because it's a new phase of the stability. So I appreciate I told him before I gave him all his flowers before he passed, so I'm at peace. Um, I do appreciate his yeah, integrity, yeah. his security, and he's a defender of young, young people anywhere. Um, character is important to him, and uh, I believe that that's part of my, my goal to live a character based life. And so, whatever you, whatever you stand for, you just go with it. And that's what I learned from him also. But you don't have to back down. So, I know he knows. He, when he told me the first time he told me this, I started crying. He said to me, out of all my children, they're most like me. I said, I know I started crying. I know, I know that. And I was very upset because I was like, I don't look like you. That's weird. You know, that was, that wasn't cool. But um, I have learned to embrace some parts of that because what I see is what I say. I do what I say, and I'm real, and um, I don't back down. And I'm going I'm to do what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to do what I believe, and no one can change my mind. Nobody. That's my daddy. No, you can't stop me. I'm going to do what I, what I was supposed to do. And so I appreciate yeah. um, loyalty. Loyalty yes. is very important yes. to him. I'm very committed. And so it was things I learned from him, and I'm glad that I can carry it on to live on inside of us. Amen. Amen. Family, I want to thank yes. you all. And yes. I'm glad that we included this in the service, which is very important. I just want to say, Pastor Nestle and I weren't like like close friends, but I knew him as a man of God from the church, and he was always so personable, so kind, with a smile on his face, a gentleman, a, 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 a gentleman, and I thank God for him. I thank God that I had the opportunity to make his acquaintance. So, Jacqueline. Family, you already know to hold on to God's unchanging hand because He said in His Word, I'll yes. never leave you nor forsake you. And I've never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed beg bread. Everything that He freely gave to you all, hold on to it, pass it on to generations to come. He has a beautiful legacy. Amen. Amen. Pastor, I want to thank you being here today for the words that you expressed to us it was just so proper for this service amen, amen. we've come to the conclusion of this service we went over the time but that's okay that's, that's, okay. that's okay that's okay that's okay so let's all just hold on be strong and one day we will see him again because we all got to make it into the kingdom of god amen, amen. and sheila are you the only sibling Yes, it's just, it's just you. I mean, yeah, your mother just gave birth to two children. No, it's five of us. Oh, okay. Well, yeah. I hope that your other sibling, you know, are doing well. And since this has been live streamed, I hope that they all get to see the service that took place here today. By the way, I love your outfit. All right, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. yes. So, on behalf of Dr. Jeremiah C. Gaffney and the entire staff, we extend our deepest condolences. And as we know, Earth has no sorrow. Earth cannot heal. 
they, I want to thank you for everything you did. You were just so on point from the time you walked in. Thank you. And thank each and every one of you. God bless you. I'm going to ask Mr. Edward to come and do the committal. Amen? Amen. And Nick, you want to come up with the, with the committal? May I take the reading? <coughs> My go to girl, we're going to close with the word of prayer. I just want to say these words. As we say farewell to Pastor Nicholson, earth to earth, ashes to ashes, and dust to dust, Minister Edward will give us our closing prayer. Our Father in heaven, we will keep solemnity when we come before you at this time. Yes. We thank you, dear God, for thank you. helping us to, to bring closure to this. Indeed, our hearts uh, are very warm at this time, and we do not sorrow as though they have no hope. Yes. But we thank God for the hope that we have in our souls. Thank you. Thank you. We thank God, Lord, for one who has lived this life before us. My Lord, we have no regrets. We, we have enjoyed his presence. My dear God, and now that he is no longer with us, we have memories to go by. Not sad memories, but good memories. Yes. And we're thankful for that. Thank he was a father, a brother, an uncle, a cousin, a pastor. My God, he impacted the lives of many. Yes, yes. My dear God, help us, Lord, that we, as we live, would be impactful in the life of others in a good way. Bless your God. Bless the family. Yes. And the dear wife in a special yes, way. God. Yes. Lord, the one closest to his heart. My God, I pray that you would comfort the hearts of those whom you left behind. Bless, we ask. We thank you. Thank you. In Jesus' name. Amen. I'm just going to ask y'all. This is just something I'm just going to add. Lately I've been yearning for home, but my heart has all
golden streets Jasper walls and mansions bright Crystal rivers will sparkle in his night Heaven's beauties we will share Oh